It's time for the Big Playback. Brought to you by Abby's Legendary Pizza and Coastal Farm and Ranch. Welcome back to the best part of your news week. It's the big playback for the final time this season. Now, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I introduced you to Cameron Walker. He's a young man with Down syndrome who will just light up any room he walks into. Well, that's part of the reason why the Ben Lava Bears wanted him as their team manager this season. He's always giving Ben the energy boost they need from the sidelines. Well, last night, Cameron got his turn to shine in the spotlight and, of course, he made it count. Yeah! I think we all felt a little bit like Cameron's dad there cheering from behind the camera. If that doesn't give you chills, then you must not have a heart. Simple as that. But to start this game, it was actually the 3A Lapine Hawks who showed the most heart. Aiden Brown helping them soar to a 14-6 lead at the end of one. Then to start the second, Alex Farnsworth spots up from the top of the arc. Hand down, man down. No sleeping allowed on the farm. Ben battling for the loose ball here. Check out this full court pass to Ben Keen, who switches to the reverse layup at the last second. What a smart play. Now, more basketball IQ at work here. Cody Clausen says he, he got a nice crossover, but it's not good enough for me, son. Picks his pocket, then cruises his way in for the layup like it's nothing. A close game to start, but Ben pulls away in the end. The Lava Bears win 67 to 38. Just a short drive down 8th Street, 8th Street I should say, and you arrive at Mountain View High School. Coach Bob Townsend drawing up something nice to take down the McNary Celtics, who were the heavy favorites coming in. 12 wins compared to just two for the Cougars point guard. Ando Gonzalez, a big part of that, drills that one from you, Matilla. Then on the next play, Cougars can't break the full court press. Jabal Balos capitalizes. And you know how the saying goes, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, I'm going to dunk on you. Quincy Townsend to Tane Pritcher, and the Cougars figure it out this time around. Pritcher can anchor the paint on the other end, too. A man among boys. 6'11 against 5'9. Yeah, I like Pritcher's chances 10 times out of 10. Then with Tane drawing all the attention in the middle, look at that. No look, kicks it out to Quincy Townsend. The freshman finishes the highlight, but it was McNary who would finish off the Cougars in the end. Nate Mitoff muscles his way in. He draws the foul, plus get, gets the bucket as well. Even though it was a loss, nothing but respect for the Cougars with the way they played in this one, giving the Celtics a good test, but falling just short 60 to 52. And now to the Friday games, heading up to Redmond, where the Ridgeview Ravens took on the Pendleton Buckaroos. Starting at down low, Paige Pencer doing the dirty work on the glass. She gets the rebound and the bucket. Here's Pencer again with the ball. She swings it over to Jenna Albright. She puts it up for three. No doubt in her mind. Was there a doubt in anyone's mind? I don't think so. Off the inbound, it's Albright again. She is just automatic from beyond the arc, this time killing it from the coffin corner. It was a two-woman show in the first half between Albright and Pencer. Page hits this sweet move down low, adding to the Ravens' lead. The Buckaroos, though, looking to bounce back, and uh, here's one way to do it. Just split two defenders and hit the tough shot. Second half now, Albright off the inbound misses. She gets her own rebound and gets two. Just patting her stats at this point. Jenna, I'm on to you. You're, you're not fooling anyone. For Pendleton, Chloe Tabor looking to do it herself. Just muscles it down in the lane. Count it for dos. But Richview doing it on all ends now. Brooklyn home in the freshman with a clean swat. Albright pushes it up the court. Sets up the offense, swings it to the corner, then right back into the paint. And that's where Faye Davis gets her bread. Textbook execution. Nothing new for the Ravens, though. They've been doing that all season long. Ridgeview pulls away in the second half, giving Pendleton just its second loss of the season, 51 to 29. And finally, our last highlight of the season here. And it's only fitting we ended with two of the best teams on the high desert, the undefeated Crook County Cowboys and the only twice defeated Redmond Panthers. Garrett Osborne coming into focus here, gives the Panthers the early lead. 
with the foul. Then for Crook County, big man Caden Lowenbach doing it all on his own. Kisses it off the glass. Now you know this name, Kevin Sanchez, a little inside out dribble, draws the contact. Are you kidding me? Stop it, Kevin. That's the reigning Intermountain Conference Player of the Year, trying to make it two in a row. Now check out his handles on this play. We got a cross through the legs, stop on a dime, send his defender flying, one dribble, double pump, bank is open. Literal poetry in motion. Redmond not going away easy. The Panthers pounce on the offensive rebound here, and Skylar Jones is there to turn that into two. But uh, all night long, Kevin Sanchez was doing this. Drains the three here. And then on the next Cowboys possession, his bro, Jesse Sanchez, does the exact same thing from the other side of the court. The Cowboys officially complete the undefeated season. What a run for Kirk County, 16-0. Not a single smudge on their record. Congratulations to the Cowboys on perfection. And don't move a muscle, Central Oregon. Top plays are up next. This bucket from Cameron Walker we showed you earlier is of course going to be on it, but what are the other two? Find out after the break.